All right. All right. All right. We are live. And here we are, guys. I've got Joe with me, of course. We are doing the thing. I, I love your background, Joe. I really do. I love the wall. <laughs> uh, we got to unmute everybody here. Oh, okay. Thank you. For there that. we go. <laughs> there goes my whole fucking clever comeback. Well, you know, you can try again. <laughs> I can't remember that. It's too late. Moan's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, today we have a very special guest on the show. We've got Thor with us. I've been wanting to talk with Thor on the show for some time because I know I originally, kind of like Joe, I met Thor through John from Modern Life Dating on Dude Party. And Thor is... Dude, he's an, an incredible man. He's an incredible individual, an incredible human being. So, Thor, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Rob. It's, a, it's, it's definitely my pleasure. I mean, I've known Joe for a while, and I've met you just recently. And, uh, you know, we really hit it off, got a lot of things in common. Thanks for bringing me on, man. Hey, I, thanks. I enjoy for having a chat with you guys. Thanks. I like to think the uh, universe brought me and Thor together. For sure. Yeah. Uh, what do you call that when you bring the forces together and something good happens? I don't know. It's fate. It's that or serendipity or something like that. There you go. Yes. So here we are. We're having our little conversation. Three dudes, three guys that occasionally, I don't know, drink, fuck women, uh, do what we got to do. And I would say to one degree or another, whether we like it or not, we're all we're all where we're at because that's where we need to be. And we're all, so to speak, living the dream. Even if it's not the dream you want right at the moment, we're well, getting there. Well, even if it's a nightmare, huh? Yeah. Well, even that's the secret. That's the secret to living the dream, gentlemen. Listen, <laughs> nightmares are dreams too, and they don't last. So we're all living the effing dream. And there you have it. <laughs> I like it. I like it because, yep, there's been times I, I wrote a blog piece here that I published about a week ago entitled, Did I Ever Tell You the Time About? And it's I started off with me talking about wanting to eat a shotgun round, that I was looking down the barrel of the shotgun. And the only thing at that time that had stopped me was my cats are looking at me. And I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, well, if I do this, who the hell's going to take care of them? <laughs> because the way things are in my world, most people in real life anyway, they're not going to get in touch with me for about a week after assuming that if I had done it on that day, it would be at least a week before I would hear from people. I mean, yeah, the job would have been calling me and going, dude, where the fuck you at? But they don't have like my extended family's number. They'd have no one to contact to be like, hey, have you heard from Rob? And my dad, he's, you know, we talk about once a week or so. And if he hasn't heard from me in a day or two after that, he's still not really worried about it. And so it could be up to about two weeks before these poor fucking cats would have, you know, before someone would have come through the door to see like, hey, what the hell's going on here? And that initially is what stopped me from putting a shotgun round through my head. Okay. And this wasn't all that long ago. This was maybe about a year ago where it was just like, oh man, this just sucks. And it got to a point though, where I realized just like today, like what you were saying, it may be rough and you can't see the way out. You don't see the light, but it does change. And so just like a dream, a, a nightmare is a dream, but it does end. So something for the guys at home to ponder and think about. Well, damn, Rob. Yeah. So that, that's a hell of a place to get to, man. And and the cats. The cats made you think. You had a connection with the cats. It was. It was. Thank God you didn't. Thank God you did not realize that those cats would have had food for weeks. Which yeah, in there for a very long time. <laughs> they could have yeah. ate me. They would have had a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad you did not realize that. 
Oh, uh, Jesus well, Christ. What led you to this? Now I know. Like now I know. <laughs> Dale's cats will have a buffet if I ever decide to do it. <laughs> Pick up the damn phone. I'll kick you in the ass. Don't do that. No. You, know, you, only, get, you only get one Earth suit, and there's not a reset. No, Correct. No, this ain't a dress rehearsal. That that's correct. Both of you are absolutely correct. That you only get one, and this ain't a dress rehearsal. It's a run through, so make it fucking count. Was there, there a, was there a woman involved here, perchance? Eh, peripherally, peripherally, yes, yes. It, there, it wasn't a one itis, so to speak, because I've done that when I was really young, like back in my late teens, early twenties. That was the one itis, you know, back then. This wasn't a one itis, but it was the ah, god damn, I miss what we had. Not her per se, but I miss what we had and couldn't see a way out of it. You know, it's interesting you say that because I draw a parallel. I had this conversation with a client just recently. He's in love, he gets in love, he meets this woman. But then he meets another one, and he's interested in something new. But he's in love, but that starts to wane. And it, it got me thinking what he really meant is he was not really in love with the woman, but he was in love with the way that newness made him feel, releasing the chemistry in his brain. He was in love with that, and he associated it with the woman so deeply as if it was an addict. When that was gone, he was stunned you know, and needed something new to replace it, much like an addict does. Uh, it's amazing how our brain chemistry works in that fashion to draw men and women together. And I'm sure there's something similar that happens with the woman too, long enough for us to procreate. For well, sure. That is love. That, yeah. That's what love is, is a chemical reaction. You know that. It is. It's very, very strong. And, uh, and I mean, there's other shit that goes. But if you think about it from uh, – like a woman's perspective where they're solipsistic it's about them about the feeling they need they need that feeling it's not so much about the selflessness that i'm in love with this person i'd do anything or no no no. i need that feeling that feeling that rush that sensation is you're in love with it for yourself well that's what happens when a winch rips your fucking heart out of your chest and steps on it is you lose that cut your supply off Look at Bull Rush chasing the fucking dragon. Yes. Just like a fucking dope fiend eating a hit. It yep. is. It is. It's totally it. And and I'm okay to admit uh -huh. that in that respect, I am a fucking junkie. I'll admit that. Oh, well, sure. We you, all are. We all are. Once we you get are. a hit of it, it's once you allow it, and drug you ever. get that hit. It's magical. It And it's not like uh, <laughs> you have a choice at that point. If it's cut off, it sucks. Yeah. It's not like you can say, all right, I don't need this anymore. That fucking dopamine dump just stops, right? And it goes in fucking absolute reverse. So as good as you felt, as high as you felt, as fucking empty and, you know, dark and uh, whatever, sucks. The reason I brought it up is, Rob, possibly you had that, you could remember what that feeling was. Mm -hmm. and, and you're missing that. Absolutely. Oh, I, yeah. I know what it is. That's the fun thing, Thor, is I can sit here on, on this panel, on this show, and I can theorize and I can, you know, do the logical thing. And especially the hindsight is 2020 thing. I can do all of that. Okay. I can sit here and I can rationalize and I can, you know, the cool calm of stoicism and all that shit that we do as men, I can do all of that, especially after the fact. Mm -hmm. When you're riding the wave, when you are chasing that dragon and you're in it up to your fucking eyeballs. None of this shit so, makes sense. You don't well, want to fucking it hear it. Makes sense. You don't want to hear it. That, thank you, Joe. You don't want to fucking hear it. And all you can think is, I want more. I want stay more. on that surfboard all the way to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. And so, you know, we talking about it and theorizing and doing the whole armchair Monday night quarterbacking about it. That's all great and fine when you've gotten through it and, and you've, you've either, you've gotten another fix or you got over it. You went into recovery. If we're going to use that term, since we're talking about chasing the dragon a little bit. But it's another thing when you're eyeballs deep in it and in that moment and you're just like, man, I am climbing a fucking wall. Mm. 
And, and that's the hard part because you can't – all the theory and all of the – rationale and all that stuff doesn't matter At even least, your past experience even the, the, oh yeah doesn't matter no it, it puts you in quite a turmoil and this is where <clears throat> when i when i was counseling a man, young man that's going through this he was reaching out because you know i feel like a lot of men are somewhat isolated from peers peers right. of solid strong men because sometimes when you're in that pit of despair you don't want to hear it such as Joe said, you just don't want to hear it, but by God, you need to hear it. It's ripping the Band-Aid off. Well, and, yeah, I, and having men do that for you can actually help you get through that. Now, that being said, there's nothing quite as good as getting that rush again, so spin the plates. <laughs> <laughs> That's a quick well, cure. And well, here's yeah. the thing. You can always – you can never connect the dots looking ahead. You can only connect the dots looking back. Yep. Right. You know, and, and put this, oh, okay, this, 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 and that makes a little more sense. And mm -hmm. the and if you do it right, and I, I can tell you as a young man, when that happened to me, I didn't do it right. So, you know, when you're older and you have some awareness and you have more, you know, effective resources to deal with this shit, you have a peer group, like Thor said, you have a fucking strong group you can reach out to. Um you know, connecting these dots, you can put this shit together to prevent it from happening again to a degree. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, and I stand by this and I will until the day I die, having your heart broken, like having your fucking heart ripped out of your chest and fed to you by the evil wench is a rite of passage. Every man must experience it and survive it and come out on the other end. You can't Big, fast, explain stronger. it. You must experience it. You have to. I think every well, man must lived. Otherwise, you've never really taken a chance. You've never really lived. And I mean, we all here. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, and yeah, this is going to go a little dark, but uh -oh. it, well, it is because it's the truth. Uh, well, you I like and I talked a little bit about it, Joe, but it is mm -hmm. going to go a little dark. And that is. We, at some point, for the most part, are going to die alone, unmourned, and forgotten. Mm -hmm. You need to come to that realization and accept that. It doesn't mean you have to like it, but you need to accept that you're going to die uh, alone, unmourned, and unforgotten. Because the world doesn't give a shit. It's just going to move right on, and barely anyone's going to blink an eyelash at the fact that you died. Okay, because I've seen it multiple times over the last few years, and I'm not bitter about it. I'm not angry about it. It's just it is what it is. And so you need to take your chances. You need to do the things you want to do. And I get it. Guys don't want to get hurt. You don't want to be looking down the barrel of a shotgun, and it's your cats that are looking at you that get you to kind of go, maybe I ought to hold on for a minute here. Okay, you don't want to be there, but at some point you might end up there. Okay. Yeah. And dating sucks. Not going to lie. It does. It sucks. But you know oh. what? I would rather do it than not. And no, so absolutely. I mean, you got to live life, right? There's parts yeah. we don't like. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. As... In the day and age we live in, we have access to this tremendous amount of knowledge and wisdom that's gone before us. I mean, I'll just show you right here some of the most intense stuff that's ever been produced right here. The rational mail. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a condensed version of it that's easier to read. And then stuff like this, right? You all recognize this. The this Bible. information we have does arm you with, you know, some knowledge that you can blunt that trauma. And if you're selfish enough and you make yourself number one as your mission, you could certainly blunt that trauma moving forward. That's well, what my new course is all about is how to blunt that trauma and exist in a long-term relationship. So when the love fades, you know how to rekindle it and you know how to spark the newness again. Now, yes, there's very dark psychological tricks that go on that. And if I said it on YouTube, I would be considered a cult leader because oh. it's very dark 
and you can, for lack of better terms, manipulate people in a good way to their advantage and your advantage if you have some sort of moral foundation to do so. Um, so you can blunt that damage. You can blunt that by using the red flags, right? I mean, dating sucks, and you got to get through some red flags, but you know. Come on, and, listen to y'all, too. Dating does not suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I mean. Ending it like if you really like somebody and it ends, it sucks. Yeah, well, when guys say dating sucks, rejection, right? You're getting a prostate exam, I, it sucks. I personally <laughs> hate <laughs> Dating I personally, <laughs> yeah, I personally hate regret far more than rejection. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, you know, I, you know, dating uh, sucks for me just for the fact that it's, I got to get back out there. You know, I got to soldier on, put yeah. on the boots again. And Clear that up so we don't through. scare everybody away from right. dating. It's not that dating itself sucks. It's, it's dating that, okay, now I get to start over. Now I get to go back out there, whether I go to the bar, whether I meet them through day game, you know, some random woman on the street, or it's through online and I start swiping right. And it's the whole, okay, here we go again. Because mm. I've done it so many times over. Oh, I'm going to help you here, Rob. Rob. Ah, okay. I am going to help you so much here. I want you to reverse your thinking and think this way. How... How could you possibly deprive these beautiful, sweet young women of the privilege of getting to know Rob says? No, I got you. I got you. And and there was another guy who said something very similar that uh, that I have got. But again, it's that whole your whether your eyeballs <laughs> or not. But he said, "There's women out there right now fantasizing about a guy. Why not you?" You know, why not you? Why not? Why not them fantasize about you? Well, and, and that to me was like, oh, that was a big one. You know, because it yeah. was it's like, well, they are because we as men, we fantasize about women, whether it's the woman in our life or it's some actress, celebrity, some fucking porn star, some random chick you saw at Starbucks or or down at the local grocery store, because that was one that I used to have that my ex-wife didn't like. She would always be like, if we were to have a pass, would you give me a pass for Johnny Depp? And I'm like, sure. Yep. If you ever meet Johnny Depp and he wants to bang you, I'll let that slide. That's a good attitude to have. I mean, well, you're being realistic about. Well, I was. Being real, yeah, I was being realistic, but I also knew the odds of her ever meeting Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp wanting to bang her was pretty going to happen. Yeah. Where I was. She was like, so what's your pass? And I'm like. The girl at the gas station behind the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> the 19 year old in yoga pants at yeah. the checkout line with no yeah, underwear. But, but that turned nervous. her on, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, she, she got outraged. She was like, What? And I'm oh, like, Still turn her on. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Not her. Well, then how about, you know, the, the girl that lives across the street from us? Yeah. You know, I see her going out and washing her car, and I'm like, Hey, what's up? Isn't it funny how our mentality is different like that? Where, <laughs> you know, they can see Chris Hemsworth and just melt, right? Yeah. But for us, you know, you see that 23-year-old that's at Starbucks bending over, hand you the latte, and all of a sudden, there really isn't, and you catch a whiff of the MPJ, and no other woman exists for that moment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's not the it's not the Beyonce. It's not Sati, oh, or whatever that crap is. No. Yeah, no, I don't think so. No, you know, it is literally the girl next door. <laughs> it is. Well, circle yeah. back around to the uh, dating being a pain and the endings of you know how much that sucks and all. There's a lot of gain in that. And I know, Rob, I know you're saying that because of where you are in the process. I yeah. know what you're saying. So, but through that um, process, you kind of, it's, you're building that emotional muscle, so to speak. You're putting another layer on that callus. Mm -hmm. So, which actually helps moving forward if something should come up and if something should come up to where you find yourself like getting the fucking, I like this one again. You're more careful. 
you know, you assess a little more, you're a little uh, more cautious about jumping into it. Like there's more, she's got to bring more to the table than just, you know, the vagina and the feels like it's got to be fucking quality there. So when you go through that, it's, and obviously in the beginning of the uh, breakup or the departure, whatever the fuck happened, it's not like that. You don't see it like that. It's not fun. There's no value in it in that moment. But but your course, and I've read through the stuff, very fucking interesting, good shit. It's also like a dose of preventive, med a preventative medicine that prevents you from getting caught in that trap. Yeah. Did you notice that a big part of it's about creating uh, the potential or the 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 covert potential of loss for the woman mm -hmm. that right there subject that subverts her her hypergamous nature. Dream. It also keeps her very fresh, very new. And uh, if you do it just right, you're going to end up with a, a well, hopefully you start out with uh, sex, a, a woman that has sexual access. It's feminine, mm -hmm. fit, friendly, cooperative, enthusiastic, and understanding, and has this underlying tension that she could lose you to a more a better woman, dread, a more fit woman. It is dread. We spend two days on it. Yeah, absolutely. And the techniques to do it, and it it is almost all covert. It's it's kind of like what is that scientific principle when you bring an observer in, it changes the outcome. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's Schrodinger's cat. Is it alive or is it dead? Right. Right. When they, they literally can take light particles and shoot it through two slits and it looks like a wave. And then when you look at it, when the observer looks at it, it changes the particles. It's a strange thing. So part of what I'm teaching here, it, you do not disclose this to the woman. You just do it. No. And this is why if I was to say what these are publicly, They'd immediately put me in the same category as a Jim Jones, you know, uh, the Waco guy, because these are some of the techniques that are overtly used in some of these cults to suck a person in so much that, oh, they have to get validation from you. We don't go that far. But really, that validation, when the woman gets it from you with a underlying current that she's not quite aware of, of loss, and you're the best that you can be. She's the woman that in public says, look at my man. He's so freaking amazing. There isn't another man that compares. That actually brings a sense of fulfillment in her life because she can broadcast this to her peer group. That is incredibly heady for a woman mm -hmm. is to be able to broadcast to her peer group. Look at the prize I snagged. Look how tough. What a stud that guy is. If you don't have that in your long-term relationship or if your marriage is failing right now and you're not getting sex every day, and it's down to once a week, guys, you need this because you need to take these techniques. You need to start passing her compliance and fitness tests that she's throwing at you and start leading the relationship. And this is what the course is about. Thank you for bringing that up, Joe. Appreciate it. But that's for another story. Back to dating. You got to get through the red flags to even get to that part where you think you might want a girlfriend, right? I, th I think a lot of guys would be very happy just having a nice girlfriend, one that Absolutely. they can pretty much count on to be loyal to them. Loyal and as sane as any woman can be. Yeah. I you mean, know, that's man, what they want. I like them a little nuts. Well, I, I like crazy women too. And, and we all know that women by default are not sane like a guy is because they're yeah. just different. Okay. The best all ones, the best ones are the ones that just look so practical, feminine and high status and just all reserved. And then you get them into the bedroom. Now it's wild ass shit. Mm -hmm. That's the ones you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's crazies out there. Unfortunately, you know, uh, modern feminists really lied to women about what they can get out of life and what is fulfilling to them, you know? And, well, are uh, we not seeing that wave of uh, women who really got real deep into this feminism shit? Like the, these mid forties women, like you're starting to see more and more and more come to the surface talking about how they've been sold a fucking lie. Telling these younger girls, like, don't fucking believe it. It's not fun over here. I'm 45. It's lonely. It's shit. It's a fucking, yeah. 
I've noticed it. I've seen, I've had conversations with women about this and who are vehemently against uh, the feminist movement now and want nothing more. I've talked to somebody who's older than that in the 60s, late 60s, and she confessed to me, you know, coming out of a divorce. She was now this strong, independent woman who wasn't going to be oppressed by her husband anymore and went out and did the fucking whole FOMO thing, you know, had to do the catching up and even found, even got with a guy who she was engaged to and adored her. And he was a, I mean, I guess you could call it, I know we don't like the words here like that, but alpha type, you know, had control of his life, but, you know, uh, very proactive in his own life, took care of shit, was a, a man's man. He could work with his hands, you know, he can interact. Well, she found him to be a little too overbearing with her son and which he was just trying to lead the kid because he had no guidance and she left the guy because of that and she said he was too opinionated like if he would in other words he would call her on her bullshit and so that was uh 20 years ago mm. and she confessed I wish I had somebody to love me. Like, I wish I wouldn't have been so pig headed. I wish I would have been more flexible and I'm lonely. I'm like, damn. Regret in an older woman is a very sad thing to see. It is it really sad. Is. It is sad. And, and that's, know. and you know what it takes. Do you understand the, what it takes for a woman to confess that? Like actually admit to that. The fucking self actualization, the 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 realization that is, uh, I give kudos to her just for the fact that she had that like that moment of awareness. Mm -hmm. A lot because of them, she's been living a soul crushing life. Because and I know women who are miserable and swear they're fucking happy. I don't want kids. Oh, I don't want kids. I'll just collect fucking animals and cry myself to sleep every night. Yeah, you guys, kids. you guys know the old saying about women, right? If you if you want to make a woman happy. You got to grab her by the hair and drag her screaming and kicking and crying to happiness. <laughs> yes. And then when she gets there, she goes, oh, yeah, this is great. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You, you literally do have to drag her <laughs> kicking and screaming. I could come up with five <laughs> different examples. You need this, honey. No, I don't. Don't want that. No, and do that. Uh -uh, no way. Uh -uh, not in a million years. Okay, we're doing this. Oh, yeah, this is pretty damn good, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But you know what? That's the spice of life. That's what makes it new and fresh. So working yeah. like that together is pretty, pretty good. But so sad with the older women, Joe, uh, like that. Uh, you know, and unfortunately, I'm gonna say that men have a big part of the blame to this because they don't know how to to lead in relationships. And unfortunately, their relationships, the women in their relationships are under a tremendous propaganda assault. It's been there since 1965. Oh, at least. and that and and it's economic in nature. We see it sexual in nature, mm -hmm. and it it is to let that woman know your husband ain't shit. You need this. You need that. Buy this. Buy that. Buy this. Buy that. And in most relationships, what is it? Sixty percent of the women in a long term relationship, maybe even more, are in control of the finances. They spend the money, and guess what? If they can get them educated, in debt, out in a cubicle, sending their kids to daycare. Using divorce lawyers, do you um, can you imagine the amount of money that's being pumped back into the economy because of that? Screw her fulfillment and happiness. We'll just tell her that she is living the dream, and if we say it enough, she'll believe it. Mm -hmm. They'll do it, especially if you can see if you can get if you can just get it to uh, catch on. And like you look at this, look at four year fucking uh, schools, four year colleges pumping these fucking chicks out every four years. Yeah. By the second year, they're corrupt. By the fourth year, they fucking turned. I don't want yeah. kids. I don't want a family. I don't need a man. I'm going to fucking jump on every fucking dick that comes out in front of me. And mm -hmm. I've, I also have experience with a uh, younger girl, early 20s, that whole fucking mindset. Mm -hmm. She hates the stress of having to perform so high. 
Mm -hmm. Hates it. Having to be, it's uh, having to constantly perform. And, and let me clear this up too. And like Rob, you said that, that most men, you know, at some point, just want to have a fucking nice woman to come home to compliant, mm -hmm. pretty, sexual in nature, which I mean, I think a guy has a lot to do with bringing that out. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like it's a, it's a complimentary ideal from both ends. It is. And the economic drive behind, you know, the whole uh, whoever's fucking operating this thing. That's a whole nother fucking show. You know, the dark forces, elites, whatever mm -hmm. that are manufacturing this fucking chaos is uh, in their best interest to keep you thinking that you're, as a man, you're worthless and you need a woman and a woman that, you know, she's the ultimate valuable prize to, uh, like you said, get, get them in the workforce, get them spending, get them thinking that that's what they want. And then what's fucked up is even a woman who has been indoctrinated into that thinking and I've ran across this early mid thirties who finds a guy that does make her feel like a woman and she does feel good around and she has that safe, secure feeling. If she doesn't give in to that biological fucking response, she's going to be a miserable person hearing because she'll fucking fight it tooth and nail and make it difficult for everybody. And then in the meantime, run her own self into the ground along with the relationship. And yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And I'm going to address what Red Crusader said about the women of the generation being untrainable. I think you just have a little bit different challenge than when I was a bit younger. I think that they yeah. can be trained. Here's how you do it. You start early and they're up against propaganda. So you got to take a mindset of counterintelligence here. You're going to go down some dark paths, but you're going to use psychology and you're going to use how our mind operates under the current uh, circumstances. And you're going to use that to train her with it. I guess, you know what? I'm going to go to hell. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good man, but I'm a bad fucking boy. You're going to use the same training that Pavlov's dogs would. All right. That's what I, that's what I preach. That's what I say. You're going to use these repetition. You're going to set triggers. And you're going to build slowly from there. And you can have a person that is completely happy on your mission. I think you could do it at any age. Some gals fresh out of college are so full of themselves because they can't see anything but the propaganda. They're going to have to get past the epiphany. And then they're going to look around and the realization will hit. Young girls haven't been hit so hard. You can find them. They're out there. You're just going to have to do twice the work. So you know what I say? Bring it on. I'll die with a sword in my hand. Let's do twice the work. So be ready to do it. Is it is it depressing? Sure. Don't let it get you depressed. Get trained up. Get out there and get in the fight. Jump in the arena. And it's, it is uh, like it is fucked up that you have to have a fucking calculated strategy in place just to move forward and fucking have somebody pleasant in your life that, you know, you like being around for more it, than it a might, few hours might, a day. It might seem Jesus. fucked up, but winners do whatever it takes, and the and end I, result's what counts. I can't fucking argue with that. So you do what needs to be done, and then th there's a there's a point in time, like you you held up the Rational Mail and Rich's book and uh, Pook. I think yeah. everybody should read Pook, every guy, and definitely Rational Mail. So where in the beginning it's going to be. Like, there's going to be a, a mix of, like, what the fuck is this? Like, what's going on? Like, it's a mind fuck. But then there's also some good uh, good moments when you realize, like, damn it, I knew I was right. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You know, that's what happened to me when I read Rational Mail at first. I like, God damn it. I knew it back then when I was 16. And that chick, I thought. She just wanted to hold hands and realize a lot of your gut feelings. That's your instincts kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. Gut brain. Mm -hmm. Not talked about enough and definitely undervalued and not paid attention to nearly enough. So, but then after you get past the, the, uh, 
I don't know what you call that, where you just mind blown and you get a little fucking angry about it, right? The anger phase. Yeah. Fuck, fuck everybody. I've been lied to. Yeah. But then, then after that, and you've had some experience with it, and you really get to see, like, this ain't just a fucking nonfiction book. Like, this is real deal shit. And you have an opportunity to actually put it into practice and experience it in real time. It's actually a luxury. Like It is. It makes it's, life it, easier. It, it makes you angry and you get angry for a while and you suffer the grievance loss of what you believed. Well, there's a but part of actually, you that's dead now. There's a, there's a part of your identity that has to cease to exist to move when on. You get, when you get back from that and you start to see some success because of your knowledge, you have the keys to the kingdom. It is actually a feature now. It is not a flaw. Right. And it's going it, to, it actually, it actually improves you. You mm. become better because of this knowledge when you apply it. Unfortunately, yeah. in our community, there's those that like to dwell in the theory and not apply it in their own lives. Therefore, they're, they're somewhat depressed. Mm. And I feel sorry for them. I understand why you can get some satisfaction in knowing the knowledge, but some of this is hard and you have to put yourself out there in the real world. You have to step in the arena and sometimes you're going to bleed. That's what we it's call part of the it. Uh, red pill masturbators. So let me ask you this. And I've been guilty of this in the beginnings was over fucking for lack of better terms, the RP. I think we can't say the stuff anymore. Cause you'll get fucking yeah. pushed to the back of the line. Like you fucking overdo it. Like you over red pill shit. And now everyone's an enemy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I don't think I could personally over fuck. Just no, so no, you know, not okay. over fuck. Believe me, I'm not saying that. <laughs> but but like you know, over theorize and okay, yeah, you know, over -theorize right, right, right. And, like, and then you you go out instead of being like, okay, I have a, a wealth of knowledge and information that puts me in a better position, the best position I've ever been in my life to move forward in every area, women, friendships, whatever, business. Yep. Um, Instead of coming from that mindset, it's coming out the gate suspicious. She's an enemy. Ah, she's paranoid. Like, paranoid. Yeah, she's uh, like she's a single mommy whore who's had a ton of dicks and she can't pair bond and all this shit. You, you can damage I mean? yourself. I mean, as you think, so you become. You can damage yourself if you're not in that moment and taking well, things at face value. We need to talk about that. You can be aware, though. Because there's a lot of people who do that, who, mm -hmm. who like, fuck this. Well, yeah. And it's that, that, is, that is our we we talk about like the feminists and and even when you know we were all blue pilled to one degree or another we we affectionately call it drinking the Kool Aid okay mm -hmm. but you know what even with the red pill you can drink too much of the Kool Aid and that is what you're talking at that's what you're touching on joe it is that paranoia that oh well she's obviously you know in order to protect myself i have to assume that she's a whore that has fucked a billion dudes and she's got 80,000 kids and she can never pair bond and blah just blah, your blah, turn blah. and it's yeah it, you she's looking that, for the bigger better option right. all the time and i think that's guys that a have drank too much of the Kool-Aid on our end. And it's also guys rationalizing a safety net. It is. And that yeah. the danger in that is you become black bill. There you go. There you go. Thor, you nailed it. That is the road to the black pill. And, and the black pill, say what you will about it. It is an extremely effective ego protection for your failures. Yeah. That's there all is, it is, is ego protection. That's that's it. It's nothing but ego protection. It's a way to create make yourself feel better. Mm -hmm. It's a way to make yourself feel better. And it's a way to create an artificial safety net that never existed so that you don't get hurt. And the sad thing about that, think about it. It's the black pill. It's colorless. Do you want to live a colorless life? I don't No. That's why even though dating sucks. Because I got to put on the boots. <laughs> I got to fucking get out there and do no, my. No, 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 no. I just think of the privilege those girls I, are going to get. I get it, Thor. I get it. But just just hear me out. Yeah. Hear me out. Dating sucks. 
and I got to put on the boots and I got to put on the pants and I got to put on the shirt and I got to go fucking do the thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, God damn. But you know, I, I keep doing it because it's worth it. Yeah. Well, it you, you're about it. to hit the fun phase, too. It's about to get fun. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that. I know that. But it's just that it's the slog. That it's like, uh, yeah, this again. Oh, Rob, have you got to the point it. where you are in a situation where it rains, it pours? Oh, dude, I'm in one right now. I'm in one right now when it comes to online dating. Uh, uh, it's funny because that's just, you know, it's a buffer and, you know, you need to go out and blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Wait but until it goes beyond online. Well, and they all want that attention. Oh yeah, the same dude. week. <laughs> oh, dude, but I'm I'm starting to go through that right now. That it's it's like fishing, and you cast out your little, you know, you got your hook, you got your worm, or whatever bait you're using. There's not just one fish biting. There's like four, and it's like holy fuck. And yet, a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, whatever, you know, even a year ago, it was like. I, there's not much going on and and i've learned that there are cycles that there really are i that's the only way i can describe it there's cycles where it's like maybe it's because covid is you know the tv's telling the girls it's okay to take your mask off now i don't know what it is with today's day and age you know as far as that goes i don't try to overthink it but I'm looking at it going, well, the girls have gotten sick of wearing masks. They got tired of the chump they're with, or they got tired of being alone. And now they're biting. And it's like, oh, my God. I, I, I It is one of those first Chad problems where it's like, fuck, I got too much attention in some ways. It's like, what am I going to do with all this shit? And, he, well, and some of them I know, it's like, yeah, this ain't going to go nowhere. That's but, okay, though. That's yeah, okay. it is. It's totally okay. It's it, like, it's practice. It'll, it'll get to the point where it's like, oh my God, I have so much work to do here. Right. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to have a bitch and show on that. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got too many <laughs> goddamn women to deal with and you're like, God, just leave me the fuck alone. I know. It's right? such a, it's such a Chad problem. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> all all these like that, I, you don't you don't want to oh, answer all these I gotta oh, fuck, get I attention gotta go to over there tonight. Damn it! I just want to stay home. I just exactly. want to watch the fucking Avengers in my drawers. <laughs> I just want to sit home and drink beer and watch <sighs> YouTube. Can you just leave me alone? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, I get it, but it, it's I'm going from that transition of fuck, I got to put the boots on and I got to swipe and I got to go out and I got to fucking get shot down, which I get it. It, it, it. it never getting shot down, getting told no. You you you. If you do it enough, you get used to it. I was about to say, does that bother you still? Uh, not really, but at, at a certain point, it still kind of stings a little bit. Okay. Really? And it does. It's not enough to make me stop. It's not enough to make me pause. It's not enough to make me say, fuck it. I'm not doing this. I'm going to go live in the woods somewhere and be the next Ted Kaczynski. Okay. It's none of that kind of stuff. It's understandable. But it, it still sucks when you're like, damn, she is hot. Mm, yeah, I don't like that. I want her, and yet she doesn't want me. And it's like, I get it, whatever. So you move on to the next girl. You know my experience with that is? Mm. Say you get a string of fucking L's, right? And um, you get to that point, and you're like, you know, motherfucker. Or you just get so, like, whatever, I'm done. And you just get this attitude, like, I don't give a fuck. And you do the dumb shit that you just wanted to do anyway. Like it comes off. That's when you wind up having the most success. When you just like at the point where you're like, ah, fuck it, I ain't trying no more. <laughs> right. Like, boom, boom, boom. Here it all comes. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my experience anyway. I don't like rejection. Does not bother me in the oh, least. No, it's you have to accept it and get used. To, you have to get used to the idea okay. that just like you as a man. You have your your type, your preference, your this is the girl that flips all the switches for me. 
whatever it is, whether it's physical, sexual, intellectual, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. She's no different. She's going to have whatever it is that flips the switches for her. And you may not fit that. And odds are, honestly, you're probably not going to fit that. And that's why she's going to tell you in one form or another, she's going to tell you no. And you need to get over that and just realize, eh, it's not personal. She's not saying you are a piece of shit. Mm -mm. She's just saying you're not what I want. And so you go, ah, fair enough. And you move on. But it does, it, it, it can get to the point where you're just like, ah, God damn it. Well, you really have to say that line again. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I've noticed too, like as you go along, more experience you have with the dating on the whole dating scene and spending time with women, really getting to know women. You, you have a, this understanding of uh, female nature. It's like you could take said girl who said, no, I'm good, not interested, whatever. In another fucking dimension, you had gone and approached her 10 minutes later and she could have been in that moment, like literally thinking about something that some chick said at work that pissed her off. And she's just in that space for about 10 minutes. And you got the no right then. Mm -hmm. Right guy, wrong time. Mm -hmm. You know, because we talked about being the right guy at the right time. Which has been most of my success. Is mm -hmm. literally just being the right guy at the right time. You no, know, on some level, I mean, that's everybody's success. Yeah. You're the right there guy at the right time. <laughs> what nobody wants to fucking talk about that that it's like hey sometimes it is it's her mood whatever it is she's in the mood for bearded or non-bearded or whatever it is she's looking for the bad boy or she's looking for the clean cut guy or it's sometimes i've encountered in the past you were the last man standing because you could out drink everyone else there is quite a bit of that now i, I just did a video uh, to try to improve men's odds when it comes to social environment in person i just did a uh been working on it for a little while based on some counseling sessions with some guys i had and trying to improve their uh masculine presence mm -hmm. so i did a list of those just telling guys look it's kind of hard though to talk to guys today and, and get them to increase their masculine presence and you all know what it is i mean at the extreme end cops use it, it's called command presence right Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's exactly. body language that goes with this. It's, yep. But if you don't understand it and you don't know how to approach it, you come off as a puffed up douchebag. Yeah, because so, you're not embodying it. You're not internalizing it. It's uh, You have to develop the mindset that you're the hero of your own movie. I mean, you take up space, but you're not obvious, right? You touch people more. You nod up. You don't nod down. You don't hunch your shoulders. You're putting that air of a masculine man in command. There's much more details. Jump to the YouTube, take a look at it. This is an excerpt from my current course, but you can improve those odds, what we were just talking about. Sometimes you just have to be the right guy in the right place, but you can improve the odds of you being the right guy at the right place at the right time by having a dominant masculine presence that you have developed. That's not so overt that you're a puffed up douchebag, but you're the guy. You're not that guy that goes in the club and goes sits at that table. That's not masculine presence. Nope. You're the guy that walks through. You're slow to catch gaze. When you're looking at people, you nod up, slightly smile. You have humor. You understand how to speak to people. You can touch with Kino. You can command the area, right? Uh, you can do all of those things, head up, shoulders back. You have self-care. You're always presented as your best self. These are just some of those things, right? And you have this, this air of personal value about you. You can increase those odds of being the right guy at the right time. Uh, it's just, just a few of the things that I present. But there's a there's a quick list. You guys can look at it. But if you do it all at once, you've never done it before. We've all seen the guy that goes into the social environment. Yeah, I know. I've done everything. I know Kevin Samuels. I know Myron Gaines. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't can't be that guy. <laughs> you know, in fact, don't ever reveal too much. Here's a great tip, Rob. Don't ever reveal or name drop 
yeah, I've had two Lamborghinis, two M1s. No, <laughs> but you can improve your odds to be the right guy. When it comes up in conversation, you can reveal it. Yeah, I might have had one or two of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're, oh, you're yeah. allowing that discovery intention. So anyways, I kind of went off on tangent, but I wanted to say, yes, there is a huge component of luck and being in the right place at the right time. But you can improve the odds when you're there in your favor. I, I agree 100% with you, Thor. I want to add to that. Please. The biggest part that I've found over you know, 30 fucking years of dating, doing LTRs, doing a marriage, and then getting back into dating, doing spinning plates, all the, all the buzzwords that we all know and love and cherish. Okay. One of the things that I've found that a lot of guys seem to either ignore or miss entirely, or they brush over, they gloss over. When I, when I mention about being the right guy at the right place at the right time, you have to get out there. Okay. That it, it like for me, day game is not my thing. Walking up to random women and just starting to bullshit with them. I respect the guys who do that. That, that is just one. That's a hurdle that I have find very difficult for me. Okay. Not saying I can't, but the returns on it are just way too low for me. So I go where I'm good. Rather Smart. than, yeah, I, I go where the fish are that, 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 you know, as a fisherman, I go where the fish are that I'm going to have success with. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's either online or it's, it's night game, I guess, if you want to call it that it's going wow. to bars. Okay. And that's part of the key is if you want to be the right guy at the right place at the right time, that means guess what guys, you got to go to the bar or you got to go wherever it is that that you have found a group of women that would be interested in you. Can and I add something to that? Absolutely. Yeah. Please. Not only do you have to be there, you have to be there and be armed with, because you can go in to the fucking situation where a woman is pursuing you. You're the, not, you're the fucking right guy, the right place, right time, and turn it into being the dumbass and lose the fucking interaction you can be going from the right guy to the wrong guy really quickly if you don't know what the fuck you're doing blink of an eye blink of an eye you can definitely screw that interaction up absolutely so you I, gotta, 100 percent. like if in she can be throwing all the cues at you you start acting like a dumb ass or being too compliant too fast like you, you know all the all the I things i find most guys over talk less is more guys way over talk Right there. That's mm -hmm. the biggest way of stepping on your own dick is and, you say too much, you talk too much. And that's my course, you'll get more of it. <laughs> you get more of that. Yeah, over talk. You can state too much. Less is better in most circumstances. Absolutely. She wants to, she's, let her write the fucking romance novel. Yep. Let her fucking have it. Give well, her the gift of writing that, fantasizing about that. Letting her fucking imagination do the work. Shout out to Rolo Tomasi. What was one of his iron rules? Never, never explain to her or give her the reasons why don't she's not going to fuck you. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, de don't explicate, demonstrate type of thing. No, no. no. He says he goes and he's very specific about it. Like, don't give her the reasons. Don't. Oh yeah. Talk her out of fucking you. Yeah, like yeah, don't give her reasons for not wanting to. Fuck yeah. You. Yeah. Let her. Let her figure out why not to fuck. You. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let her. Let her determine that. Don't. Don't do that for her. I mean, the right guy, right place, right time. You're basically there to not fuck it up. You know, you're basically there to not fucking ruin it. That. And it can be something as simple as telling her too much. Like yes. In, like you can run on for four minutes and just she's like, oh Jesus, what the fuck is I thinking? This dude, the mm -hmm. chatterbox. Like, oh, I could see what this night's gonna be like when I want him to fucking bang my head through the headboard. He's gonna be talking to me. Oh, yep. see or the other so, one is that you overextend your stay. You overextend your welcome. Yeah. You you become the clinger. The you get attached to her and so you hang around too fucking long. Mm -hmm. It's like no, you you say your shit. You, you, you know, you acknowledge her, you, you say hi, you bullshit for a second, 
and then get the <clears throat> fuck out of there. You know, go somewhere <sighs> else. Eject. Get out of that situation. Because you don't want to be the guy that overextended your welcome. You don't want to be that guy. Because I've been that guy. And it's like, oh, fuck, yeah. You, well, and you know it when you see it. You're like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, I got a story for you related to this a very, Please. very topic. If Please. you guys want to be patient, this is a good one. Let's hear it. I want so to hear it. I worked out in gyms a few years back, four or five years ago, and I am working out with an NPC, a National Physique Bikini Competitor. And I've worked out with her for a year, right? Hot. Looks great. Part Filipino. Beautiful. And she is confiding into me several different things about her, her love life, right? While we're working out. She's telling me that, you know, she, she was with so-and-so, with so-and-so. He's hot as hell. But it isn't but, you know, a, a, as soon as she bangs him, they're sending her flowers and chocolates. They're overwhelming her, and she ain't liking it. She's getting nice guy syndrome, right? And, and so she's sitting here telling me, you know, sometimes the sex is good, sometimes it's not, but it, it, it wanes off. And then all I get is phone calls and text and and it, all day long. And I'm sitting here listening to her complaining about guys being clingy to her. <laughs> and some of these guys are look like fucking Chad, right? Yep. And so she's telling me all this. And then she looks up at me after sex and says, why can't they be more like you? <laughs> I went, hmm. I didn't say shit. How would she know anything about me? Exactly. Right? She's <laughs> projecting what she, her fantasy is on you. Yep. Exactly. Yes. Now that was a huge opportunity. Yeah. I won't say what I did with it, but um, <laughs> there's a lesson to be said there. You know, she was in the dating market and she was complaining. I wonder how many women do that with that nice guy thing. How oh, many man. guys think they're doing the right thing? Almost all. Sending all flowers to her work trying to show off in front of the friends and all they're doing is just destroying that tension and that mystery and that fear of loss that she actually needs to feel complete in her own sexuality so that she's confident she's mating with an alpha. In other words, drying her panties. So I, I want to circle back to what you said, Rob, about the um, guys who had the, Oh no, Thor guys who looked apart, looked the Chad. So I know this dude, fucking 6'3", about 230, 10% body fat, fucking jacked, good looking dude. His wife, she's nice looking. And he comes out. So you know about this drink I'm doing. I ain't even going to get into all that. So I have one in my hand. He comes out from his workout and he's like, oh, he's got a pump. This dude's fucking giant. I'm like, hey, do me a favor. Hold his drink like you just fucking worked out and you're going to drink it. And it's going to be the thing that saved your day. Because I'm like, this is if you want to look like me, you drink this. And, you know, the whole fucking thing's about. So he stands there and he holds a drink. And we at the gym and I get him to stand by the fucking uh, cable machines, you know, with the, all the fucking free weights in the background. And he's standing there holding a drink, and his wife comes out. And she's like, what are you doing? And he said, I'm taking a picture for Joe. And she says, is that for your hose or something like that? And he's like, no. I said, no, it's just a promo thing. And she's like, whatever. She walks off, and he's like, thanks a lot for getting me in trouble. I said, what? Are you serious? <laughs> And he, he doesn't know how to handle the damn compliance test. He gave me the drink <laughs> and fucking took off after her. Like, I was just taking a picture, Jesus. I'm like, wait a minute. So a couple days later, we go back to Jim. His wife won't speak to me. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Like she won't, like she gives me the cold shoulder. Like I give a half of a fucking fuck, let alone a whole one. And I'm like, what's up? You know, fist bump, do the whole fucking bro thing. And I'm like, was that for real the other day? Like, was she really pissed off? He's like, yeah, she's so jealous. I'm like, good. I said, you're in a good spot. No, I hate it. I'm like, no, man, that's, that's kind of a good thing. I mean, you don't want fucking insane jealousy. You know what I mean? But I said, that's actually a decent sign that, you know. It is. And I'm glad you brought that up because it's a big part of what I'm teaching in the course is, okay, let's take the exact scenario. For him to run off and to placate her 
he lost frame. I call that a compliance test. When a compliance test comes at you and you're in a relationship that's longer term, it is about either establishing frame or reassuring yourself that you have frame. So she comes in there and she looks at me and I'm taking the pictures and all that stuff. Are you taking pictures for your horror? No, I'm going to take my shirt off in a minute for those six whores. <laughs> now get out of here so I can do it. That's right. You're, you're in the shot. Get the fuck. Move, move. She's still jealous. Her panties are going to drop as soon as I'm done. So, but I can't let that go. You know, I have to take the consequence if she wants to pout for a while. But I'm yeah. going to teach her that's unacceptable, particularly in public. Hmm. Anyway. That's just a little sample. I mean, that's I, I, I see guys do this, and then the next thing I know, yes, she's jealous, but then she – I find that people that get too jealous and do this a lot are covering for something. Yeah. Because she's out there banging the other guys. She's it's distracting. It's it, it happens not well, all the time. At the very least, entertaining other men's attention. Mm -hmm. Okay for her, not okay for you. But anyways – didn't mean to sidetrack it. That was such a good lesson, though. So many guys fall into it. It's just like the, it's just like when you're asked, "What's your body count?" Today, <laughs> yeah. well, yes, that's morning. the answer because yeah. she's testing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, that's that's always been my response when it's so. How many of you, women have you been with today? Well, you know, there was a this girl at seven a.m. Then I had to get her the hell out so that the nine o'clock could show up. And then, you know, right yeah. before I met up with you here at lunch, there was yeah. girl at 11. Yeah. So. And then I say, do blowjobs and anal count? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And well, that's what you do. Does a hand job, how do you, how do you factor in hand jobs? I'm not going to count hand jobs. We'll just do blowjobs, <laughs> anal, and vagina. Hand okay, we're good. <laughs> no threesomes. We're not counting those. No, well, those don't count. <laughs> a threesome counts as a one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. one there as far as the guy goes uh, hand yeah. jobs are half, <laughs> half. <laughs> so so if was... you're just rubbing peepees through clothes is that like a point two no, that's oh, that me. doesn't count right. my, dry, no, dry humping, humping doesn't count okay dry humping doesn't count <laughs> only if she does it to somebody else o only if you're in junior high right well i guess not today <laughs> <laughs> no shit no shit thor that it, it's funny you say that because that's kind of been something i've experienced too is that women either are they'll come over to your house uh, on a mere suggestion or a mere invitation as i call it because uh, that's all i ever am i'm just the invitation it's like either you're gonna come over or you're not and if you do, great. And if you don't, great. Because either way, I'm home. I get to do what I want to do. So it doesn't matter really in the long run if you show up or not. Okay, so they either show up and they skin off the clothes and they're looking for the bedroom. They're looking for somewhere to fuck. Or it's the Levi Love thing like it was back in junior high. And I've even said that. It's like, what, are we in fucking junior high I haven't done this since I was like 14. Are you fucking kidding me? And these are grown women. These are not junior high age women. These are these are adults. And it's like <laughs> where where what have you been doing? What where have you been? You know, and I and I'm sure they have a history and oh Rob, she's just not that interested whatever. I, I who knows. But I'm just sitting there thinking, really? We're, we're going to do Levi? No, no, we're not doing Levi love. That that was when I was 14 and stupid. We can start like that. Go younger, Rob. Go younger. Well, I, obviously, <laughs> obviously, which is typically how I date. That it's like, it's got to be, and maybe this makes me ageist. But <laughs> 40 and younger, 40 is the, the absolute low that it's like at 40, I, I cut them off at 40 and even 40, I'm pretty fucking skeptical. Yeah. But it's like, hey, look, now nah, we, we're going to cut out Rob five. I got to go. Oh, you got to chase. You got to take, you got to bolt. Okay. Dude. Yeah. 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 I got to go finish my day. I got a ton of fucking shit. I got to do. I got to right, brother. This. Good seeing you, Joe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got the next one, Joe. Love you, man. Yes, sir. See y'all. Okay, see ya. So yeah, yeah. So tell me the story. Well, it's just 
it seems to be one extreme or the other. Mm -hmm. It's either they show up and as they're climbing the stairs, because I live my my condominium, I, I live on the I guess what you'd call the second floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way the building is designed, I live on top of all the garages. Mm, okay. Okay, my garage and the other parts of this particular building. There's nobody above me. There's nobody to the side of me. And the way they designed it, there's technically nobody below me because it's the garages. Okay, so walking in my door, there's like 13 steps of stairs you got to climb. That's just how it is. And so I've either had women show up and they're literally stripping as they're going up the stairs. And they're looking at me going, where's the bedroom? And I'm pointing down the hall. It's like, to your right, there you go. Or it's, we're doing junior high shit where it's like the Levi love thing. And I'm like, and I, and I get the whole, you know, maybe it's just, she's not that interested. Maybe I'm doing, you know, beta traits, whatever you want to call it. But I have encountered some women mm -hmm. that are in their, their, their thirties and their forties that they're kind of doing that. And it's like, mm. and I'm just like, really? yeah, that's kind of strange. Um, it is. Um, let me ask you this. Just, uh, how, how is your, how is the dirty talk up to that point? It depends on the woman. Some women I've encountered are a little more, they, they don't really like. The, well, I meant, I meant specifically for the leave. I love woman. Was there an opportunity to escalate verbally? And was she oh, yeah. engaged? Was there any indicators there that it was only going to be that? I mean, I'm talking pretty hardcore time. I mean, were you, you telling her what you're going to do and she reciprocates or was she hit with, with, you know, you brought up this, a good just for my own curiosity. No, no, you brought up a good point because now that I can think at it, it's like, uh, there were probably a couple of points where I could have been a lot more explicit, I yeah. guess. Uh, that's, and, and that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I've always been more, leave it to their imagination. I I've been more the understated guy mm -hmm. that I don't, I don't want to explicate. I would rather demonstrate. And so everything for me is always an undercurrent. It's, it's there. They know what's there. And I let them, you know, I let them come up with their own fantasy, I guess. Okay. And I don't speak a lot about it especially on the phone or via text, just because one, this isn't a 900 line. I'm not right. here to talk dirty to you so you can get off. And meanwhile, I'm not getting anything. No, no, no. And end result. What I, what I, what I would ask you to consider and our listeners is consider that when you are more explicit, you're building a story. You're, you're very good at telling a story. So you're telling a story and guiding her fantasy. You're actually in complete control of her mind. And you are making her body respond based on your verbal commands. And you're, the, the key to doing this is to make her repeat things back to you. So as you're making her repeat these things, oh, I see there's some wetness here. You like that, don't you? Make her say something. I'm asking her a question, right? So All I right. want engagement. I'm not explicating for her benefit. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm painting a story or a picture that I'm basically put it, giving her a deal that she cannot refuse. I like that. And I, and I'm going to have to try that out. Um, I could go into more detail with you. I do a lot of this on the sex module because believe it or not, married women need this. They need, oh. they need to get the newness. And this is yeah. one of the techniques you can use to get newness. And I've done, I've done some private surveys on dirty talk and engagement. And it, it's actually more important for women. They have an auditory sense that we don't remember where we talk about their sub communication. Yes. How good they are. There is a huge component of that that is sexual for them. Huge. It's how they compete intrasexually. So if you can tap into this, and most men aren't adept at this because they're afraid to do it because it sounds rather crude. But if you're in the environment where the arousal's there, it's not that at all. It's that I'm actually commanding the situation. Sterling Cooper is very good at it. And him and I have had many discussions on why this works so damn well with almost all women, given 
that you've set the circumstance to do so. Um, women are also very, if, if they find you attractive, watch what they do in text. They're very much more open to that sort of stuff. On oh, text. Yeah. yeah. But you can open that door. And then when you get to your voice, you can use cadence. You can use pacing. You can use pauses. You'll ask the question. Gaze and pause. And, and they love it. And it actually fulfills the need. So even if you're in kind of a relationship where the sex is waning, this is an element that you can come learn from me. And I got plenty of examples. I might even bring a person in and show you guys. That'd be cool. It, it would be really cool. And because it works. And um, some of this is, is based in, it's definitely based in science that's out there that you can research yourself about how female sexual response is. It's different than most people think. And I will tell you this, most women's fantasies from experience and research is so intense. You just need to tap a small part. If you don't believe me, go read the book or download the audio book, My Secret Garden. Mm, yeah. And it talked, this is when there was no internet. People were sending letters and tapes into this woman about their fantasies on how they needed these. They needed them just to become aroused. And for the men that tapped into those and got them engaged, they didn't need to know them, but they needed to know exactly how to draw it out in them by commanding them and guiding them through it. The sex was amazing. And this is 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that they haven't calmed down. They've gone well, up. <laughs> if anything. Yeah. It, so I was just curious, you know, if you're getting that kind of resistance, was there any opportunity to prepare her mind for what was about to occur? Absolutely. And, and like I said, you know, hindsight's always 2020. Um, one of the things when you mention, like, you know, with the, the wording, the, the language, the verbal, one of the things I've always been pretty good at, and, and this is, I guess, the study of human interaction, psychology, whatever, is the, the body language side of things. Because there's a lot of times where I won't say much other than, hey, to get their attention. They look at me and I'm going... You know, I've had women in bed where they start closing their eyes or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where are you at? I need you here. Open your eyes. Look at me. You just commanded her. That's going to turn her on, man, for sure. That's great. And, and, and I've not yet had anyone fail that, I guess, compliance, if you will. They've always opened their eyes and looked at me while we were doing what we're doing. Yeah. In the heat of arousal, it's a very attractive woman to be, you know, um, believe it or not, you read that book on their fantasies. A lot of them want to be, this is very politically incorrect, but to be controlled through the experience. Yeah. They want to be, for lack of better words, they want to be dominated. Dominated, controlled, and have that feeling of the highest level you'll see in those fantasies is uh, compliant, non-compliance. Yeah. Uh, where there's the illusion of it's not consensual, but it is. Oh, yeah, kind of a rape fantasy. Yeah, kind of, but it's it's at the point where nobody's getting hurt, mm -hmm. very bad. But <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's where it's it's real enough to enjoy the moment and that connection. It becomes very passionate and validational for them. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you spill the beans, it's like it's like destroying the illusion of the magician once you know yeah once you know it. magic yep yep that's that's why you can't really red pill a woman no you can't it's the observer effect i talked about yep. and why my course is only for men well and it makes sense you know it's like even rollo said a while back men don't red pill other men it's women that red pill men Mm -hmm. You know, that all the stuff we're doing in our little circle type of thing, it, it's not for women because most women that I've encountered that have either stumbled upon it or sought it out, they're usually the ones going, oh, you guys didn't know that? Yes. You know, I they're find like, that more often than not. You guys are like in grade school while we're in college. Mm -hmm. you know? That we're we're stumbling around in the dark and thinking we're fucking clever. And yet it's like the women are like, well, that's just a given. You didn't know that, really? It's like, 
you know, and here we're thinking I'm making great strides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Us, us guys, we're, we're behind the eight ball. I mean, for the ladies, they got to do intra-sex competition. Unfortunately, in modern days, men have to do intra-sex and intersex competition. So we're really behind the eight ball. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree slightly with you on that one. Sure. Thor, Cause I look at it and while I could sit here and look at you and, you know, size you up compared to me and say, damn, you know, Thor's in good shape. He takes care of himself. He obviously works out. He lifts all these things. At the same time, I can look at it and go, I don't really care. And you're not me. And so while you may have certain features physically, just from looking, I can look at it and say, oh, yeah, you definitely are surpassing me in certain areas. There's other areas that it's like, dude, you haven't met me. No. You know, these women, you know, it, it, I am the hand up Mona Lisa skirt. I'm a <laughs> and so I for me, I don't really consider another man competition. Other than when I've been like at a bar and I've been able to look at a dude and okay, what's he got going on? That, that's oh, what I'm referring to. Yeah. And yeah. I get it. You know, that it's like, okay, he knows how to dress yeah, and, and he's in good shape and he's not running his mouth too much. And it's like, okay. But I also look at it as, eh, you know, that's what she's into. That's fine. She wants that guy. That's fine. No harm, no foul. It's right. whatever it is. But then I just look at the next girl and it's like, hi, I'm Mona Lisa. You know, I'm the hand up Mona Lisa. That's the abundance mindset. It doesn't matter oh, it really as long is. as you're the best you can be. And that that's the only part where when it comes to the intrasexual for men, because I know, for instance, and this is where I think, and I could be wrong, but I but think- But we do, we do compete on all levels for oh, salary, we, position, we, sociology, we, yeah. Totally, totally we do. Absolutely. I'm not going to disagree with you at all on that. But here's one area where I think men and women are different is, okay, I could walk up to you, at least I think I could. I could walk up to you like in a bar setting and maybe you got a phone number or you were macking on some chick or whatever. And I could walk up to you and be like, yo, dude, you seem all right. Come here. Let's, I want to talk to you for a minute. And you and I would sit down and swap notes. For sure. Women, women don't do that. No. Okay. That is the advantage that men have is I could walk up to Thor and be like, dude, where'd you get your clothes? Where did you, you know, I could smell your cologne. What is that? What, where, where did you get whatever it was? And oh, yeah. you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, dude, fuck off. You know, you'd be like, oh, hey, man, cool. Thanks. And you would fucking talk to me where yeah. women don't do that. <laughs> women, you know, the, the, everything, every other woman's a bitch to her, you know. And so the, yeah, the level of intersex competition amongst women way is higher, immense. way higher. Yeah. And, and that's where I do look at it and go, guys, be happy you're a guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you can, if you have the guts, the balls, the whatever, to just walk up to another dude and be like, how did you do that? How, you know, whatever it was that you saw him doing. And he might start off kind of surprised and be like, ah, fuck, I don't know. It's just what I do. But then he'll think about it and he'll tell you what it was he did. And he'll be like, oh, you know, I picked this shirt and I wore this belt and I fucking wore this cologne. And you're going to find out about his attitude. You're going to you're going to find out. He's like, ah, you know, th these women, they're all over the place, whatever. It it's that abundance mindset, whatever it is. He'll tell you what it is. He'll he'll lay it down. And if he's kind enough and patient enough, he'll fucking lay it out for you. And he'll be like, oh. Well, I, I did this, I did that, I said this, I said that, I stepped away, I stepped in, whatever it is, to give you notes. Mm -hmm. Where women don't do that. Women fucking fight. You know, right. they, they're all a bunch of bitches to each other. Even amongst Having close a, friends. Oh, yeah. they're the worst. Yeah. Those are the worst, is the close friends. Women that are close friends are absolute enemies, man. They fucking <laughs> hate each other. Because I've seen it in real time. It's like, yeah. man, if that's how I was with my guy friends, it's like, man, I, I would be just as neurotic as you guys. <laughs> because you guys secretly fucking hate each other. Yeah. You know, you, you, you smile on the outside and, oh, that is so good. You go, girl. 
And the reality is you're thinking, bitch, I hope you die in a ditch. You know, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Yeah. And so it, it is one of those things, guys. So be be happy you're a guy because oh. the intra sexual competition, yeah, while we do, we it's can, minimal, mm -hmm. but it really is minimal. It really is. Most guys will fucking help you out or bare minimum, they're not going to get in your way. Okay, where, where the women, on the other hand, man, they will fucking step on each other every chance they get. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for those douchebags out there that will step on you. They're black pill. Oh, well, <laughs> they're either black pill or, in my experience, they're not necessarily black pill, right. but they're, they're naive. They it's, don't it's, know. It's that scarcity mindset that drives yes. it. Yes. I got to get mine. Okay, yeah. And so they're the ones, which is why, and I know I've said this on prior shows, and I've even written about it to one degree or another, that when I go out to like to chase women, to go out and pick up women, I either go alone mm -hmm. or I will find a guy that would that knows what's up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the term is wingman, okay? Mm -hmm. well, it's very rare. If you can find a guy that'll wing for you, Dude, that, that is a treasure, okay? Because most guys don't know how to wing because they either intentionally throw you under the bus or they unintentionally yeah. throw you yeah. under the bus. And so if I'm going to go hang out with a bunch of guys, then I'm, I'm, uh, my default is I'm not here to pick up women. I'm just here to hang out with the guys. Yeah. Where if I'm going to go out and meet women, I'm either doing it solo or I've got like one guy that I know, oh, I can count on him. I know he knows what he's doing. He knows the score. He knows how this works. And he and I will absolutely destroy wherever it is we're going. We're, we're just going to be a force to be reckoned with, but they are rare. Most guys have no clue. Right, right, right. So I would agree with that. So guys, do you want to have a clue? get thor's course <laughs> yeah now if you want to try and experiment <laughs> if you have a girl that's a good enough fb have her wing for you oh those talk are talk about pre-selection gentlemen yes those are uh, if you can find a woman that'll wing for you <laughs> that is a platinum mine not dress, a gold mine dress her to the hilt yep put her on your arm and let Watch what happens. Go. Yeah, that's those are the absolute best. <laughs> you can get a woman who will be going out and picking up women for you. Those are the best, but they are extremely rare. At least <laughs> those are extremely rare. Yeah, but, but do you want to make one? Join my car, so I'll teach you how. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Did, exactly. you, is there something else you wanted to mention about your course, Thor? Now's your oh, chance. Oh, what, what was I going to say about the course? Well, I mean, you know, the reality is, is, is uh, we're probably in our audience. There's probably some guys that are a little bit older in their late thirties. Maybe even there's some guys out there that are married and things are starting to become compromised. Really, there's a large portion of the course that would work to correcting that relationship and, and, and putting you on the path to fix it. You know, uh, I wouldn't be so arrogant to say once you've split and you're in the process of a divorce that this is going to help. However, there's always uh, an exception to the rule. And I know at least one that that did happen with using these principles. Um, it will improve your relationship no matter what, because you will be very aware of how a, a, a woman's emotions operate within the confines of a long-term relationship. I'm going to talk about what happens in a long-term relationship after the honeymoon, when the drugs in your brain wear off. That's why the analysis that I do is so important because it's going to discuss everyday behaviors that people do. You're looking for contempt. You're looking for argumentativeness. You're looking for public displays of disgust in the relationship. These are all indicators that you need to do something to become attractive. You're losing your attractive. She can still have genuine desire for you. One of the biggest indicators, you start having a dead bedroom. I got a headache. I got a headache. Guys. Uh, not tonight. I'm tired. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you the hard, cold truth. Yeah, she's on her period. She might need a day or two off. But other than that, it's really not a problem. Uh, if she's all about you, she'll figure it out. There's ways to do it. So how do you 
get her to the point where she's all about you. That's what this course is about. So you get through the brain chemistry. You're observing the behaviors. You need to be aware of some things, particularly if you've entered into a marriage. Realize that the divorce statistics show that about at, at, at three years, and it makes scientific sense, at about three to four years, there is an increase in divorce and separation. Yes, absolutely. Think about it. The brain chemistry wears off. Now you see her warts and smell her farts and vice versa for you. The kid's already here. He's just weaned off. Now it's time to find some new DNA. You know, her friends are out there still partying. She's got FOMO. She's got the media pushing her with divorce porn every day. Now, there's also one that many people are familiar with. It's the seven to eight year spike. And then there's two smaller spikes after that. There's the 14 to 19, and there's a small one right around uh, 23 to 25. And then after 25 years, it drops around 20% for divorce. So, you know, you're starting to figure, you can see that if you're lasting that long, you're kind of figuring shit out. Um, so when, when the chips are down and she's not giving you sex and there's contempt in her voice, you're going to have to do things for yourself. You're going to have to start an action plan. that's going to last you at least 10 months, if not a year to correct what you have become unattractive with. You know, you're going to need to fix your physicality. You're going to need to fix your finances. You're going to need to fix your mentality. You're going to need to understand that she's going to throw the two forms of shit test at you, a compliance test and a comfort test and how to deal with both of them. They are very different when they're combined together. You've got a huge problem because she's going to throw a fit about frame. Then she's going to break down and cry all trying to get her way. It's a tantrum. You'll see it in these relationships. Uh, so you need to know how to handle it. You need to be that rock and you are going to lead. Now here's what it's leading up to. It's all overt. You're doing or covert. It's all secret. You're all just handling it. Now, after you get to a certain point, if she's not making improvement, and I'm telling you about 80% of the time, she's going to make improvement in your relationship. If she does not, then you start the overt portion. And the overt portion is, look, if you're not getting along with me and you're not having sex with me, there's other women that will. Yep. And that will fix the, 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 the other 19%. Now, uh, once you've accomplished that, things are well. You reestablish your frame, you reestablish the game, and you maintain it. You drop it back into the covert arena, and you make sure you're having that good sex because that's the glue that keeps the chemistry going. Now, you might need to get that newness again. Many techniques. I spend at least three hours on the different techniques you can use to establish the newness. Part of it's the dirty talk. Part of it is how to command. A little bit of techniques from BDSM I bring in so that you're controlling. Ah, I don't want to say controlling. You're commanding the relationship. You're leading it. Now you're not. A, you're not a. Um, you're not a ruthless tyrant. No, not of course not. But what you are is a magnanimous leader. So I demonstrate how to do that. And then finally, on the fifth day, we're going to discuss alternative lifestyles, which you know, given your. Um, Religious background, some of it, we're going to talk about multiple marriage. We're going to talk about uh, uh, polygamy. We're going to talk about non-monogamous types of relationships and uh, how those can work in a long-term situation, in which the pitfalls you have to be aware, aware of. There's quite a few warnings. Most people can't handle it. However, there is a rise in modern women that want to have relationships like this, so you need to be aware of those pitfalls. So we're going to talk all about that so that you're fully armed, and then when you're done with the course, you're going to have that analysis you can keep with you and refer to as you hit those rough spots. And it's going to guide you right back to the, the work that you're going to have to do to lead that relationship. So that's kind of what I'm putting out there. Uh, the course is going to be open for enrollment. You can pre-order now and you can pre-order using the link you have, but uh, you won't be charged until June 28th. That'll be open for five days. And then the course is going to start July 5th at 5 PM Pacific daylight time, two hours of lecture, uh, we're going to have at least one or two guests and then an hour of Q&A beyond that. Uh, there's also going to be course materials given to you. It's going to be almost 200 pages of slides and references that you can refer to with research materials. So it's a little more comprehensive than just a long-term uh, relationship training course. We're also going to be talking about how to maintain that uh, masculine and dominant presence throughout your relationship. That goes a long way to maintaining attractiveness levels. So 
Basically, we're going to remodel you, and you're going to get a better relationship out of it. You'll get the girlfriend of your dreams, and you'll learn how to keep her forever. I like it. <laughs> Very comprehensive from what I'm hearing here, that it's like, yeah, this isn't just something you're going to go through in a day, guys. This, is, this isn't a light read. This isn't a, oh, hey, you know, I I, I bought, you know, so-and-so's book or course, and, and I I steamrolled my way through it in under 24 hours. Yeah. I It'll know be 10 hours minimum and we'll probably be going three hours a day. It'll be five days long. So, well, and I know from uh, Thor gave me a little preview, a little taste. And the, when I started looking at it, I was like, holy shit. This, this isn't just like, I took, I took a minute to put it together. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't normally, you know, endorse or recommend things unless I've either tried it out or I've at least been able to sample it and and kind of draw my own conclusions uh, because that's I'm not about, you know, making the money. It's I'm not here to hustle. And and I look at it and I'm like, wow, Thor's done his homework. OK, it's very comprehensive, guys. There's things in there that go way deep. And and there's even, you know, even me being the the consummate bachelor, being the guy that, yeah, where I, I know for me, I don't want kids because I don't have kids and I'm almost 50. And so I don't want to be a dad. I'm OK with that. That is my decision. But I, I get tired sometimes of chasing the dragon. And that's my own internal fight between what is new and strange versus what it's like having someone who's around because I've had both and Thor's got a lot that addresses both of those areas. And I was just like, Oh wow. You know, he's, he's not just slapping some shit together and ripping some shit off the internet and repackaging it as his own. He, the man has done his homework. He knows what he's talking about. So guys, it's worth looking into. Okay. Rob, I really appreciate that. And you brought up a good point. I want the guys to know out there. Yeah, it's definitely not a grift. I don't do this for a living. You don't do this for a living. Not at I all. get a I get a lot of satisfaction in the philosophy that you know, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. I am privy to this knowledge, and I'm also not so egotistical to think that I am not standing on the shoulders of giants and expressing it to you guys. I want to make it very personal. And the reason that the that the course costs what it does is I have to cover the cost essentially of the internet, you know, obviously the broadcast system, the printing, the putting together the videos and all of that stuff. That's the reason it costs. And also because nothing, nothing of value is just straight free. You don't take it for what it is unless there's some value attached to it. And, and I and agree. really that's what you need. Yep. And mm -hmm. I agree with you hundred percent on that. That if, if there's if it's free in that sense, then nobody cares. It's like, ah, oh, it's free. Who fucking cares? And, I, and I've encountered that in all aspects of life. You know, never mind the amount of time and energy and uh, the, the overhead that goes into what you're doing. Yeah. It's the fact that, well, if you give it away, nobody fucking cares. Right. Where if, if you charge something for it, then people tend to sit up and pay attention yeah. So I agree with you hundred percent. So his asking price guys, it's not unreasonable. I'll no. say right now, it's not unreasonable. At all. He could probably charge three times and it would be reasonable. It's like, there's a lot here and you're not, if you get through it in, in more than, you know, if it takes you two days and that's all it takes you to get through it, you're going way too fast. You're, you're not, you're not reading it. You're not comprehending it. You're not in, you're not digesting it. Uh, there's, uh, there's things that he showed me that I'm still looking at that. I'm like, well, now, now Rob, you got to see, see all the lecture slides. Yeah. So realize each one of those modules is a two hour lecture with Q and a behind it. So it's very personalized. And then what you, you'll get the lecture slides, but you also get the distributable stuff too. That's not quite so personal. Right that uh because discretion is part of what we do sure and uh but we're going to give you real life examples uh, and that right there guys 
like I said, he he gave me a preview so that I knew what I was getting into because Thor understands that I'm not just going to blindly promote somebody's whatever it is that it's like that's not me. I don't I don't want to get guys going down the wrong road type of thing. And so because I've had guys try to do that. They're like, "Hey, here's my affiliate link, you know, promote my course." And I'm like, "Well, who the fuck are you and what are you doing?" You know, I, I don't want to fuck guys up. I want to help them out. And so I'm a lot more reluctant and reticent to just start promoting somebody's things. And but what Thor showed me, I'm just like, holy fuck. It's like, well, there's a lot here. And all I got was literally the sneak preview. That's what it was. And I'm just like, holy shit. So, guys, it's worth looking into. So, consider it. Bare minimum, consider it. You, you're not going to regret it if you do. Well, thank you, Rob. I hope to see you in there, too. That'll be fun. Dude, just send You'll me the there. link. Dude, send well, me the link. I'll, I'll, I'll talk shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome it. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give my two cents about whatever. Absolutely, You know man. how I, you know how yeah. I so bring me in if you want, uh, you know, if, if our time schedules work out, I'd be more than happy to come in. Okay, you bet. So, absolutely. So, yeah, guys, hey, right there, you're just finding out right now. I may be a part of this. It's like, yeah, I might be in there and be talking shit with the rest of you, too. So check it out, guys. It's it's definitely worth the time. It's definitely worth the, the investment. Okay. Like I said, there's things that even I'm looking at going – I'm pretty jaded and I'm pretty cynical when it comes to the whole kind of how to pick up chicks, how to keep chicks, because guys, I've been reading and watching all this kind of stuff for over 20 fucking years. And most of it that I have found is just someone else being repackaged. And it's like, oh, okay, this guy just repackaged the mystery method. That's all he did. You know, no harm, no foul to that guy, but. That's all he did. It's like, well, I can just get the mystery method and get it straight from the source. Or it's another guy that, oh, you found the bartender's guide to pick up. I see what you got there. And for you guys that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, that is the age difference. Okay, But it's like, oh, you're doing that. Okay, because I've literally seen it all at some point, guys, because this is an area that is very, you know, it's very close to my heart. I'm very passionate about it. Okay, so I've I've literally seen it all, and Thor's got something that's like, oh, I didn't think about this. I didn't see that. You know, it is refreshing. It is new, and he he dives way deeper than than most of the stuff I've encountered. So it's worth it's worth a look, guys. It really is. Thanks again, Rob. I really appreciate this. Now, just I want to say one more thing about it. Over a year ago, I there were guys in our, our group groups that knew I was married over 28 years. And then they knew the lifestyle that I lived. And there was a lot of interest, very much, because quite a few guys, yes, they want to be players. They want to understand female intersexual dynamics, but they, they ultimately want a good girlfriend. Yeah, they, and, want and they don't want it to fall apart. They don't want that yeah. shit. They've already had it, right? Yeah. You're going to notice in our area right now, there's, the, and you're already seeing it, quite a few men are going to be producing long-term relationship skill sets that they're going to publish. Keep in mind, I have 30 years now married. So <laughs> I, I've been through it. I have some experience and I've worked with several folks and you'll see it when I do the live examples that have been married very, very long time and some of the struggles that they've gone through and how they overcame them. Now there's nothing like experience that's talking to you. If you can pull something from that, that works for you. That's really important. So keep in mind, there's going to be some guys out there and I'm not talking them down. I like what well, they're doing. Yeah. But as far as an experience level, I'm, I'm going to have quite a bit there and a, quite a bit of research on there for you. So I do believe you're going to get a very, very good value here. And I would agree 100% with you. That That is one of the things I've always looked at in the last few years is who's this person? How old are they? And granted, I've met some 20-year-old guys that have a lot of life experience, but it it – I only found that out from talking to them, from dealing with them. And then I've met some guys that are 50 
that have no fucking clue what they're talking about. Yeah. And I'm looking at it going, Jesus, you know, my train wreck of a life is better than yours. You know, I have more experience than you, and yet you claim you're some kind of a guru. And it's like, so guys, experience matters. It really does. And it doesn't matter what the age is, but experience does matter. And and Thor, Thor, like I said, there is shit that I'm looking at like, whoa, I never even thought about that. It just from looking at the preview, just from like he said, the lecture slides, without getting into the individual content where it's live or it's pre-recorded it doesn't matter just it's an overview is what he gave me and i'm just like holy shit okay wow here's something i hadn't thought about and i thought i'd kind of seen it all so it's it's worth looking into guys so check it out so and Thanks, i don't brother and i don't say that lightly because i i don't want to be that guy i don't want to be the guy that well, what do you know about this guy? Well, I know he's on YouTube. Well, what else do you know about him? Uh, he's buff. What else do you know about him? Uh, he's got a beard. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, no, no. I, I like to know who I'm dealing with if I'm going to start, you know, endorsing or promoting something they're doing. And if and I I'm old. <laughs> Right. 58 and a half, guys. Yeah, yeah, shit, you know, yeah, you're, fuck, I, if I'm right, you're older than me. A little bit, 58 and a half. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you almost got me beat by a decade. But that means in my book, it's like, obviously, you're doing something right. Okay. And so, so are you. Well, and I, you know, yeah, everyone's got their thing. I'm okay to a large degree with Chase and the Dragon. I'm all right with it. <laughs> I like new. I like strange. That's never changed. I'll slay me a dragon or two here and there. But there you go. Okay. Some of the stuff that you, you touched on that you sent to me, I'm like... You mean I can have someone because let's be honest, guys. One of the things that I find for me, it can be very difficult is the nights. You're laying there in your bed, you're alone, and you got nothing but the dark and this empty fucking bed. And you're just like, fuck, what am I doing? And you start questioning yourself. You start questioning your life. You start questioning everything. You, that's how I ended up staring down the barrel of a shotgun. Yeah. Okay. Because the nights are the hardest. Okay. When I was younger, doing the whole, you know, when I first bought my home, I was single for several years. And so it's all I really knew other than casual dating and so you get used to that. It's it's because it's what you know. So you don't you don't think anything of it. But then you meet somebody, whether you marry them or you do LTR or they're kind of consistent, but you get used to having them around. And so having them in your bed, I have found is better than not having them in your bed. And you know, waking up and you see them sleeping or whatever it is they're doing. Sometimes they're still awake, whatever. But they're there, the comfort, the, the presence. And then to go when the relationship ends, whether you ended it or they ended it, it really doesn't matter in my book. But they're no longer there. And now you're back to it's nighttime. And the nighttime is always the hardest time. Yeah. And so with what Thor's got going on, he's he's offering an opportunity here to be like, hey, Rob, you like chasing the dragon, but being in bed alone's a drag. Well, I, I know a few things that may help you where you can kind of, you know, not to say eat, you know, have your cake and eat it too, but you kind of can. And it's like, I like that. I like that opportunity. And trust me, guys, it's not a pipe dream. And, oh, well, if you just think positive. No, Thor's going to tell you, you got to do the fucking work. And here's the work, asshole. Okay. And it's going to suck sometimes. But you know what? Nothing of value is going to come easy. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to suck. And you're not going to want to do it. And if you choose not to, well, that's on you. But at the same time, you can do it. And you can have more. And so give it a shot. 
that's my thoughts. That's my endorsements. Eh, try it out. See what happens. What's worse, you can still do the same shit you're doing. Well, how's that working out for you? Well said, Rob. Thank you, man. You're welcome. So that's my take on it, guys. That's why I wanted Thor on. That's why I wanted to talk about some of his stuff without like giving away all the goodies. It's like you might actually be onto something here, Thor. And it's for a lot of guys, I think, because you mentioned it just a moment ago before I went on my long ramble here about a lot of guys, ultimately, they just want a girlfriend or a wife, if that's, if that's the direction they want to go. They want someone that's going to be around more than just for the night or for the weekend or for a month. They want someone that's going to be around for a little while. And what you're offering them, the opportunity there is, is to be able to create that. And that to me is that that is worth its weight in platinum. Because I think ultimately, you know, young guys that are 19, 18, 20, 21, yeah, they want to be players. They want to go out and bang a whole bunch of strange. I know, I get it. I go through that still. But picking up pussy and banging it and then fucking kicking them out the door is not hard. It's really not. It's a lot of times it is just being the right guy at the right place at the right time and just shutting your fucking mouth. <laughs> but if you want to have one that, I actually kind of like her. I like being around her and her her slot B fits well with my, you know, part A. Yep. And we have a lot of the same weird demented fantasies, whether it's sexual or otherwise. It doesn't matter. We actually get along. We actually get along with each other. We like being around each other other than just for sex. Uh, your favorite human being. There you go. We all want that on some level. I mean, I've even encountered players. You know, it's an amazing thing. I mean, changing that. You, you could be in the middle of the night and I hear this snoring going on. And you know what that tells me? She's she, alive and she's sitting right there. It's a good thing. It's not bad. It, what not it tells thing. me when I've heard it is all is right with the world. And, and, and it's my duty to protect her and offer those resources. There's a lot of fulfillment in that. Yeah. When it's done, it almost seems effortless. Seems effortless. Seems. There's a lot behind it. <laughs> oh, and that's what I try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot that fucking goes. There. But if yeah. you can get it all in place, some of it, not all, but some of it kind of becomes second nature. Some of it becomes kind of autopilot. And the yep. burden isn't nearly as, as hard as you think it is. No. And Mrs. Thor will tell you. That she's very thankful that I do lead it and I do take that. She's she's very thankful for it and very happy about it. And she's kind of stunned to hear some of the people in our 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 sphere and some of the modern women speaking. She's like, What? <laughs> it's like a different universe. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and, and that's that's the thing that you know, that's part of what also uh brought you here today, I guess, for lack of better words is you're looking more long-term, which, like I said, if most guys are going to be honest with themselves and honest with each other if they choose to be or not, but primarily be honest with yourself. Most guys want, whether they want two or three or whatever, but they want at least one. Yeah, It is someone that's going to be there for more of a long term someone that you know that like you say when you wake up and she's fucking snoring that you know is all's right with the world because she's alive she's breathing and she's there mm -hmm. you know i've met guys that are players that have been doing it for 20 years that you know they're close to my age that their goal from what they've told me privately is i just want to find you know this girl that i basically i can settle down with you know i don't i don't want to do this into my 70s sure you know and so what thor's offering you guys is an opportunity here if you want to be if you want to do the work to use that nice buzz phrase but if you want to be honest with yourself about what what do you ultimately want to have and that's why I can actually endorse it and not feel sleazy or feel like eh, this, this ain't me. It's like, nah, I get it, man. And it's a lot of work guys. 
and he'll help you through it, but you still got to do the work and you're not going to digest it all in one sitting. You're no, just, and we're going to give you simple tools that you can stack on each other so that the work is not quite so hard. You'll have a starting spot. And that's, there you go. He's going to try and make it as easy as he can. Okay. But I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Right. But nothing that is worth anything is easy anyway. And you guys all know that. So it's worth checking out guys. So give it, give it a, give it a shot is, is what I would say. You know, if, if, if that sounds like something you want, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. I think you'll find something that'll work for you out of it. Whether you do want to chase the dragon or you decide, no, I don't. Either way, I think you'll find something of value there. Something that is different from most of the stuff I've seen already. So give it a, give it a shot. That's all I can say. So, and that's not an, a paid endorsement. Dor Thor <laughs> has not thrown money at me. He's not been like, what's your PayPal, dude? Here, let me throw you some money. That's me from looking at what he's offered and just like, oh, shit, the guy's for real. It, it's not a flash in the pan. It's not a, a fly-by-night kind of thing. It's like, oh, you guys are going to have to do some work because I'm looking at it going, even I'm going to have to do some fucking work. So it is what it is, guys, but check it out. Anything you want to add, Thor, before we wrap up here is we're about almost at the two hour mark. Sure. If we ever do, if you ever do change the name of this podcast to the bearded badass man show, <laughs> invite me back. Dude, I'll invite you back whether I change the name or not. <laughs> but I like the name. You know, I the bearded I was, badass man show. I like it. I like it. And you know what? Because I was telling Joe this here a couple of episodes ago. I was like, you know, when I started this thing, I called it the Salt Lake sit down because it was about me. I'm in Salt Lake. And my original shows, my earliest shows, it was just me doing a monologue, basically. But as I've brought people in as guests, as I've brought people on as co-hosts, I that's where I was like, I, I need to honor that. I need to, you know, this isn't just about me. This is about us. And so I had opened it to everybody, you know, the chat holes and the guys that are watching on the replays that it's like, give me some ideas, you know, of what, what to call this thing. And, and I've had a couple of good ones and even Joe and I have tossed a couple of ideas around, but the bearded badass, <laughs> I kind of like that just because it's true. But at the same time, it's lighthearted enough that it's like, we're not taking ourselves too fucking seriously here because for the most part, I try not to take myself too seriously. It's like, come on, dude, you're a dude sitting on the internet drinking beer and talking shit on a microphone. Yeah. Come on. How fucking serious can you be? And so I, <laughs> I, I do well, like the name. <laughs> right on. And someday I'll live stream. Till then, check out my YouTube channel. It's now changed. It's not Red Pill Thor anymore. Okay. It is the dragon ship. Let and when I go live, my show will be called the dragon ship. So it's youtube.com slash forward slash the dragon ship. Yep. Okay. Let me that's put it. that there. There we go. Look at that and make sure that's right there, Thor. Does that look right? Oh, shit, you're going to make me put my old man on. <laughs> God damn, you guys know my secret now. <laughs> yeah, it looks right. Okay, there we go. So, guys, check out his channel. Uh, like I said, seriously consider and sign up for what he's offering because there's there's a lot there. Like I said, I just got the overview, the sneak preview, and I was just like, holy shit, wow. All right. So it's worth looking into. With that, guys, uh, hit the like button if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. I know a bunch of you have, but if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe. And other than that, we'll see you all next time.